What I want to do in this video is clarify the term spin loft. I know that a lot of golfers immediately associate spin loft to the spin rate itself, and although the spin loft is the main influencer of the spin rate, they are not one and the same. And especially if you're using a launch monitor like TrackMan, this is extremely important to understand. There are a lot of external variables that are not within the golf swing itself that will affect the actual rate in which a ball is spinning. So how clean are the grooves versus how dirty they are. These will affect them differently. The cleaner the grooves, the more spin you're gonna generate. This is extremely important if you're around the greens, even in full swings. Um, you know, are you using a premium ball versus not? If the ball obviously is a higher quality and uh, the softness of the golf ball, the texture of it is gonna change the spin rates. These are all things that are extremely important. But if you want to think about just how to alter the spin rate within the swing itself and assuming that all those external variables remain constant from one swing to the next, then you need to alter your spin loft. Now, the scientific way of explaining this is saying that the spin loft is relative to the direction that the club face is pointing compared to the direction that the club head is traveling upon. Now, it's actually a 3D model, but we're gonna look at it in a simplified fashion, which is the loft you are delivering at impact, so that's known as dynamic loft, relative to the attack angle in which you're hitting the golf ball. So are you hitting up or are you hitting down on it? Now, because it's a 3D model, there's also club path and club face angle involved within this. So it's actually dynamic loft relative to the club face compared to attack angle relative to the club path. But because the face angle and the club path are relatively close to each other because golfers don't curve the ball that much, then a simplified variable or a simplified formula of explaining this is the dynamic loft relative to the attack angle. So the combination of these two things will give you a number. That number is the amount of spin loft a golfer has. Now, a lot of people seem to believe that hitting down versus hitting up on the golf ball will automatically change the spin rates. But that is not necessarily true. Because it is the angle in which these two variables are relative to each other, that is what um, will decipher exactly what the spin loft is. If you are going to change these two proportionally, you might not actually change the spin loft. So for example, if, let's say we're just gonna throw out numbers here, let's say the dynamic loft, so the loft the player has at impact is 20 degrees, and this golfer is hitting completely flat into this golf ball, not up nor down, meaning this number here is zero degrees. Well, the spin loft here in theory would be 20. This would be the main answer, right? Well, if the golfer hits five degrees down on the next golf ball, okay, so now the next golf ball all of a sudden is minus five. Well, the dynamic loft, if it changes proportionally with it, the spin loft actually will not change. Meaning, if the attack angle went down five degrees, but the dynamic loft also goes down five degrees, now the loft that impact is 15. Well, the spin loft this player is generating is still 20. Guess what? Assuming that all the external variables remain the same, assuming that the club face and the club path remain the same at impact, and you hit down five degrees, but the loft also lowered by five, you're generating the exact same amount of spin on the golf ball. The spin loft is staying the exact same. So hitting up versus hitting down on a golf ball won't necessarily make you hit the ball with more or less spin. It depends on what the dynamic loft is doing at impact, right? The loft at impact. Meaning, if the golfer hits down now by five degrees on the next ball, but the dynamic loft stayed at 20, then you just change the spin loft. If the dynamic loft was 20 and the golfer hits down on the golf ball by five degrees and the dynamic loft stays by 20, now the spin loft is 25. Now this golfer, all things equal, will actually increase the spin rate because they are increasing their spin loft. So it's important to understand, it's not the attack angle in isolation that will alter the loft of spin on the golf ball. It is the attack angle relative to the loft of the club face at impact. So keep these things in mind when you wanna to try to play around with this number. This is an extremely important thing to remember and to pay attention to when you're using TrackMan. Don't forget, there are external variables that will change your spin rate. If you want to improve a golfer's spin numbers, the more important number to look at or the more important term on TrackMan to look at is spin loft, not spin rate.